I spent the past week doubling the frame rate on my Steam Deck using Lost Scaling, and boy, it was quite an experience. So today, I'll discuss number one, the origin of Lost Scaling, number two, my doubts prior to using Lost Scaling, and number three, last but not least, my experience using Lost Scaling on my Steam Deck. Let's check it out. So to keep the definition of Lost Scaling simple and easy to understand, Lost Scaling is basically a plugin originally released back in 2018. The primary purpose back in the day was to give gamers the option to scale windowed games to full screen while minimizing the sacrifice of image quality in the process of doing so. However, as time went on, Lost Scaling expanded into adding new features such as frame generation, which we'll be discussing today, where it helps boost frames per second in a game. It is achieved by adding an extra frame in a game between two frames, so if you do the math properly, it doubles the frames per seconds in hopes to make a game appear appear smoother. And the goal to add this FPS boost feature was extremely simple. It was to basically allow gamers who have underpowered gaming PCs to be able to better enjoy their games by having a performance boost. And so handheld PCs were included in the category of underpowered gaming PCs because handheld PCs, they are usually less powerful than a gaming desktop or a gaming laptop. So lots of scaling could would be considered as a big deal for PC handheld enthusiasts. However, even though Lost of Scaling was released back in 2018, which is seven years ago, Lost of Scaling was only compatible with Windows, and if you had a Linux device like the Steam Deck, you would not be able to use Lost of Scaling. However, just a few weeks ago, things changed. A few weeks ago, there was a translation layer that was created, which allowed Linux users, including Steam Deck gamers like you and me, to be able able to experience loss of scaling. Now as far as my thoughts with loss of scaling, I had my own doubts because as far as these type of softwares goes which they help boost your frames per seconds, I've heard different people talk about how those things are not worth it and that it will cost a lot of latency in specific games. So I had my own doubts and I decided to hold it off. However, thanks to Chris who commented on one of my videos saying that he wanted me to test out loss of scaling. And I decided decided that hey, why not help a fellow subscriber out, and therefore I decided to pull the trigger to spend the $7 to purchase Lost of Scaling, so yeah. Now before I share my experience with using Lost of Scaling on my Steam Deck, I want to share about the settings that I used for Lost of Scaling on my Steam Deck, and that is something that is really important because if not done properly, you could potentially play a game without activating Lost of Scaling, and so as far as my Steam Deck settings goes, I made sure that my Steam Deck's frame limit was disabled, allow tearing enabled, as well as manual GPU clock set to 1600 MXZ. So that is the only thing I did as far as Steam Deck itself settings. As far as Lost of Scaling plugin goes, there is a frame rate multiplier boost. You could boost your games to either double, triple, or quadruple, as well as turn it off. But anyways, as far as the rest of the settings goes, I left everything at default settings except I changed override Vulkan preset mode to mailbox. Now, speaking about launching a game, there is something that's also very important to note. Before launching a game, you must copy this code below and where you gotta have it displayed in the launch options found in the properties tab of each game that you wanna take advantage of lost of scaling. This is something that is really important because if you skip this step, even if you have loss of scaling, let's say, enabled to X2, you would still not be able to actually utilize loss of scaling in a game. So that is something that is really important. Please do not skip this freaking step. Now that I shared the setup that I use for loss of scaling on my Steam Deck, I'm going to transition to the actual meat of this video, sharing about my experience testing out five games with loss of scaling on my Steam Deck. I will compare the performance of having Lost of Scaling turned off versus Lost of Scaling at X2. Let's check it out. So the first game in which I tested out was Claire Obscure Expedition 33. As far as Claire Obscure Expedition 33 goes with the Steam Deck OLED when Lost of Scaling is turned off, I was able to run Claire Obscure in the mid 40s frames per second when roaming around high 30s to low 40s FPS while in battle, as well as I was able to play the game for two and a half 
half hours before needing to recharge the Steam Deck OLED. Now, as far as the Steam Deck OLED when using lots of scaling at X2 settings, I was able to have the game run at 80 to 90 frames per second while roaming, 70s to 80s frames per second while in battle, and also be able to maintain a two and a half hours of battery life. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, with loss of scaling off, I was able to have 30-ish frames per second while roaming around, 20s to 30s frames per second while in battle, and I was able to play Claire Obscure Expedition 33 on my Steam Deck LCD for about an hour and 40 minutes. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, when utilizing loss of scaling at X2 for Claire Obscure Expedition 33, I was able to maintain 60 to 70 frames per second while roaming 40s to 50s frames per second during battle and also be able to maintain an hour and 40 minutes of playtime before recharging my Steam Deck LCD. Now, as far as Claire Obscure Expedition 33 goes, what I noticed when using X2 for Lost of Scaling, it felt really good, especially while doing the real-time action button inputs during a battle. It felt a lot more smooth, in my opinion, as well as pressing the inputs to parry, dodge, jump, and whatnot. It also felt really fluid, and so that is really great. Now, the second game in which I tested out was Spider-Man 2. As far as Spider-Man 2 with the Steam Deck OLED and lots of scaling turned off, I was able to run Spider-Man 2 not too well, actually. When having lots of scaling off, I only was able to run Spider-Man 2 on the Steam Deck OLED at 30 frames per second and with 20s frame per second dips. And that includes both while roaming around as well as engaging in combat. And that gave me about 2 hours of battery life. Now, as far as using loss of scaling at X2 settings, I was able to run Spider-Man 2 in the 50s to 60s frames per second while roaming and fighting the various enemies in chaotic battles, and I was able to maintain 2 hours of battery life on the Steam Deck OLED. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, with loss of scaling turned off, I was also unfortunate to be only able to run Spider-Man 2 in the 30s FPS with 20s frames per second dips, and that includes both while in combat as well as free roaming. And the battery life is terrible. I was only able to maintain 75 minutes of battery life before I had to recharge my Steam Deck LCD. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, with loss of scaling set at X2, I was able to run Spider-Man 2 at 50 frames per second to 60 frames per second while roaming as well as while engaging in combat and I was also able to maintain a 75 minutes of playtime with the Steam Deck LCD. Now as far as Spider-Man 2 goes with loss of scaling at X2, I personally felt that there definitely are some input lags here and there but at the same time as far as any benefits with loss of scaling, I don't see any kind of benefits with loss of scaling X2 on Spider-Man Man 2. It is pretty much just as unplayable with loss of scaling. Now the third game in which I tested out was Senua Saga Hellblade 2. As far as Senua Saga Hellblade 2 goes on the Steam Deck OLED with loss of scaling off, unfortunately I was only able to run Hellblade 2 in the 20s to 30s frames per second, and that includes both while in combat as well as roaming around in the game, and I was able to maintain 2 hours of battery life. Now as far as using loss of scaling at X2 on the Steam Deck OLED, I was able to boost Hellblade 2 to the 40s to 50s frames per second while in combat, 40s to 60s frames per second while roaming at certain parts of the game, as well as I was able to still maintain 2 hours of battery life. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes with Hellblade 2, it is worse. With loss of scaling off, I was only able to keep Hellblade 2 in the 20s frames per second in combat. So yeah,
yeah, really, really bad. And as far as roaming goes, not good either. Hellblade 2 on the Steam Deck LCD ran at the low to mid 20s FPS, so pretty much unplayable, and I was able to maintain an hour and 40 minutes of battery life on the Steam Deck LCD with Hellblade 2. However, when I had lots of scaling boosted to X2, I was able to have Hellblade 2 run at 30s to 40s frames per second while roaming and in combat on the Steam Deck LCD, and I was still able to maintain an hour and 40 minutes of battery life. Now, as far as Hellblade 2 goes, it is pretty much like Spider-Man 2. There's a bit of input lag here and there, and there was no benefit whatsoever with using lots of scaling at X2. Now, the fourth game in which I tested out was Stellar Blade. As far as Stellar Blade goes with the Steam Deck OLED with lots of scaling turned off, I was able to maintain 30s to 40s frames per second while roaming around the world. Unfortunately, while roaming around in the city, I was only able to have Stellar Blade run at 20s to 30s frames per second on the Steam Deck OLED, and I was able to maintain 2 hours of battery life. Now, as far as the Steam Deck OLED goes with lots of scaling at X2, I was able to boost the performance while roaming in the world to 60s to 80s frames per second, as well as I was able to boost the performance while roaming around the city to 40s to 60s frames per second, and still maintaining 2 hours of battery life. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, with lots of scaling turned off, I was able to maintain 40s frames per second while roaming around the world, 30s to 40s frames per second while in the city, and maintain an hour and 40 minutes of battery life. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, with lots of scaling at X2, I was able to maintain 60s to 90s frames per second while roaming around the world, 50s to 70s frames per second often in the cities, and have a shorter time of gameplay, which only gets me to 80 minutes. So Stellar Blade, in my opinion, it's very interesting, in which it seems as if the LCD performs a little better than the Steam Deck OLED in terms of frames per second. Obviously, with the battery life, OLED still has the upper hand. So that is something that I find really interesting based on my testing. Now, as far as latency goes, I did not have any problem playing the game at X2. I had no problem fighting the various enemies, roaming around, Around, changing the angle of perspective with my character by toggling the right analog stick up, down, left, and right. However, as far as benefits goes with lots of scaling X2 with Stellar Blade, I don't really see any sort of benefits with it whatsoever. Everything just pretty much looks and plays about the same as when without using lots of scaling. Alright, last but not least, I tested out Metaphor Refantasio. As far as Metaphor goes, on the Steam Deck OLED, with lots of scaling turned off, I was able to run Metaphor at 40s frames per second while roaming around in the dungeon, as well as while in battle, I was able to get Metaphor to run at the 50s to 60 frames per second, and while roaming in town, I was able to have Metaphor Refantasio run at 30s to 60s frames per second, and at the meantime, was able to maintain a battery life of two and a half hours. Now, as far as the Steam Deck OLED goes, when using lots of scaling set to X2, I was able to boost Metaphor Refantasio to 80 frames per second while roaming around in the dungeon, and over 100 frames per second while in battle. Now, as far as roaming around the town, I was able to get Metaphor Refantasio boosted to 60 plus frames per second to 100 plus frames per second, and still be able to maintain two and a half hours of battery life. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD goes, with lots of scaling turned off in Metaphor Refantasio, I was able to have roughly the same stats as far as frames per second goes with the Steam Deck OLED, where it ran 40 plus frames per second while roaming in the dungeons, the 50s to 60s frames per second while in battle, and 30 plus to 60 plus frames per second while roaming in town. Now, as far as the battery life goes, as expected, it's a bit less. You would be only able to run Metaphor for about an hour and 45 minutes. Now, as far as the Steam Deck LCD 
Eagles with lots of scaling set at X2, I was able to run Metaphor Refantasio at 80 plus frames per second while roaming in the dungeon, 100 plus frames per second while in battle, 60s to 100 plus frames per second while roaming in town, and I was still able to maintain an hour and 45 minutes while playing the game before I had to recharge my Steam Deck LCD. Now, as far as Metaphor Refantasio goes, even though it is not a make or break in my opinion, but what I did notice when you stroll to another area of the town, there is a transitional screen, and the transitional screen, I felt when having lots of scaling set at X2, there was a bit of choppiness, again, not a make or break, but at the same time, it is something to take note of. Overall, lots of scaling exceeded my expectations. Though there were input lags from time to time, it did not feel as bad as what I heard some people mention about latency when it comes to these frame generation plugins. Now, as far as my thoughts go with lots of scaling based on the games I tested and experienced, I believe that whether or not a game could run well is a mixed bag, but games need to be at least at an acceptable frame rate, aka 30 frames per second and above, consistently in order to have a chance to benefit from it. Like, for example, when I tested out Spider-Man 2 and Hellblade 2, these two games struggled to have a consistent frame rate of over 30 frames per second without lots of scaling, and these two, I did not see any benefit with lots of scaling. On the other hand, Stellar Blade ran at 30s and 40s frames per second out of the box for both the Steam Deck OLED and the LCD, and though I did not see any benefits from Stellar Blade, but Claire Obscure Expedition 33 ran in the 30s to 40s frames per second on the Steam Deck LCD and the Steam Deck OLED in the 40s frames per second consistently without loss of scaling enabled, and the game felt smoother with loss of scaling doubling the frames. So in my opinion, loss of scaling is not the cure for games running at an unacceptable frames per second, but rather it is to enhance the experience of a game that already runs at an acceptable frames per second. But again, this is just a small sample size of games that I tested and experienced and in my opinion, it does not hurt to try it out as it is only 7 bucks. But yeah friends, this is my review of Lost of Scaling on the Steam Deck. Let me know in the comment section below, are you interested to try out Lost of Scaling? We'd we'll love to discuss in the comment section below. And as always, if you love gaming discussions, gaming reviews, gaming lists, and everything related to the Steam Deck, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe so you'll not miss another video. I try to post Mondays at 6pm Pacific Time and occasionally on Fridays, so stay tuned. Once again, my name is Joey for the Nomadic Gaming Guild, and GAME ON!